Hello friends, welcome back to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. And to today's class is going to be very interesting because today I'm going to talk about a topic which is hardly taught but is one of the most important topic to understand your body, to understand the metabolic processes that are going on inside your body, inside your cells. So we'll be talking about your body's response in a fasting state as well as the well-fed state and how your body responds to it. So there are these two different states we'll be talking about. We'll be also be talking about the tissues involved in all these processes. Okay. So let me write in here as absorptive state here, the, the well-fed state. Okay. So this is well-fed state or absorptive state. That means when we are well-fed, we have all the food digested after the digestion, how, what happens and how it happens, everything. And then we have this one fasting state. Let me write it here. The fasting state. Okay. Fasting state is when we are lack of any nutrients, glucose or any simple sugar or any other component in our body. How our body is going to react against it. Okay. So let's talk about that. In the well-fed state, when you are well-fed, that leads to the high or elevated level. So let me write as leads to. Remember, whenever I'm putting an arrow, that means leads to in this kind of, in this particular summary lecture. So it, it has an increased level of glucose in the blood. Okay. Higher level of glucose, amino acids, fatty acids, all these things hmm, in the intestine. This is the very first thing. Because we are digesting, right? After digestion of food, which is contain, uh, which is composed of proteins, fat, and all these components, glucose, amino acid, fatty acid, intestine increases. That further leads to uh, glucose and amino acid, particularly increase in glucose and amino acid in portal vein, in portal vein. Okay, and then uh, that leads to that leads to the release of and hormone that leads to the release of release of an hormone known as insulin if you recall if you want to know more about insulin and glucagon's role in metabolism i want you to watch my insulin and glucagon lecture summary so insulin uh, start to be released by by beta cell of pancreas beta cell of pancreas okay and uh, this increased level of insulin also inhibit or decrease the release of the release of glucagon glucagon from alpha cells of pancreas okay so this is what happens once insulin concentration increases glucagon concentration will fall so insulin and glucagon work oppositely to one another okay so that happens and these things you know both this release high concentration of insulin low concentration of glucagon where it takes place actually this is where i mean this portion is pancreas is where this whole thing is taking place Okay, and even before that, the portal vein uh, was involved and intestine was involved. So here is intestine as an organ which is involved. Okay, so now what will happen? They lead to, uh, so once we have more insulin, low, low glucagon content, then that leads to what? That leads to synthesis of, you know, glucose uptake will, will be initiated, glucose uptake uptake is initiated because our body is filled with glucose so glucose uptake increases and it also start to increase or synthesize synthesize start to synthesize triacyl glycerols triacyl glycerol and where this process take place this process take place in the adipose tissue adipose tissue adipose tissue is a specific tissue designed in our body to store fat as triacyl glycerols in there okay so so the triacylglycerol production is increased and glucose uptake is also increased then then what happens it leads to the uh, glycogen synthesis synthesis of glycogen glycogen synthesis take place okay glycogen synthesis so glycogen synthesis as well as fatty acid synthesis take place triacylglycerol synthesis take place 
VLDL synthesis take place. All this uh, structure start to form, okay? Because we have glucose, means we have all the energy that we need. So we are storing the glucose as glycogen for future use. We are storing glucose as triacylglycerols for future use in the adipose tissue, right? These things we will do. But the synthesis of all this, glycogen synthesis, fatty acid synthesis, TAG, VLDL synthesis, this all things are taken place in another organ that is liver. The most important organ as far metabolism is con concerned in our body. Okay, So now as a result of all this VLDL, fatty acid, triacylglycerol, glycogen synthesis, the glucose uptake and glycogen synthesis and protein synthesis begins. So again, glucose uptake by body cells by body cells okay uh, then obviously uh, glycogen synthesis glycogen synthesis begins and protein synthesis also begins and we know uh, we need protein to sustain our life and particularly we need proteins in a place or which organ muscles what kind of normally skeletal muscles this is where uh, glucose uptake is initiated, glycogen synthesis is initiated, protein synthesis is initiated. And then as a result of all this intake, okay, the glucose completely oxidized at the end point, glucose is completely, this glucose is oxidized into water and CO2. So water and CO2 is produced from the glucose molecule. Okay, And that thing is done where? The utilization of glucose so this is this is the part where we call it as a utilization of glucose and this utilization of glucose take place in only in one organ that is brain because human brain can only fist on glucose and some cases kidney bodies but mostly it's uh, the glucose the brain feeds on to brain cannot feed on to fat or any other component so that is very important when you have hypoglycemia where your body lacks glucose then there are different problems initiated in the body and those most of the problems are re related to your thinking your brain and all this stuff okay so now so as glucose is utilized is oxidized to water and carbon dioxide and this is provided for capture of energy as glycogen and triacylglycerol and re uh, replenishment of any protein degraded during the previous post absorptive period because you know we are not always full right because we eat sometimes and we fast sometimes it's very very important actually to have a balance between eating and fasting because while we eat all these processes are taken place and when we starve then there are different process totally opposite processes are taken place where the stored fat in the adipose is being utilized the store uh, protein component in the muscle start being utilized so all those degraded proteins are replenished all those fat degradation are replenished okay by this so replenishment 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 of uh, those glycogen triacylglycerols uh, and uh, any other proteins any proteins that are degraded during the start state are replenished by this process of glucose utilization so this is a well-fed state and how our body works and uh, reacts to the well-fed state. Now let's talk about what happens during fasting state. Okay, So fasting leads to uh, what happens actually no nutrients, no nutrient, no nutrient in intestine. Intestine, intestine is free from any nutrients. So we're looking at this in the middle. Okay, We're looking at this organ. So particularly I can write it here like something like uh, this organs involved organs involved in the process so in the intestine there are no nutrient present at this moment and that leads to that leads to the low amount of glucose low amount of glucose amino acid fatty acid and all these things in in blood okay so low amount of glucose in blood and whenever there is a low amount of glucose in blood that signals the pancreatic alpha cells to release glucagon so glucagon glucagon concentration increases and insulin concentration insulin concentration decreases so the job of glucagon what is the job of glucagon job of glucagon is to release glucose into the bloodstream okay so this is what happens in the pancreas at this moment okay because pancreas starts secreting glucagon by the alpha cells remember and it also inhibits the insulin synthesis by beta cells okay 
this is very very important and then what happens this leads to the release of fatty acid this this leads to the release of the release of release of fatty acids release of fatty acids uh, produced by the hydrolysis of triacylglycerol so how it's done all this triacylglycerol which are stored in the adipose tissue think about this they are stored in the adipose tissue are broken down into fatty acids and now we can utilize this fatty acids okay so now what will happen is that this fatty acid synthesis this is happening here and in the liver what happens in the liver in the liver the release of again release of glucose from glycogen so let me write it here we have glycogen stored in the liver the glycogen will be producing glucose and in presence of specific enzymes and the enzyme is glycogen phosphorylase enzyme if you recall glycogen phosphorylase is an enzyme that can break down glycogen into glucose and it can release glucose into the bloodstream okay and uh, also they also release glucose produced by gluconeogenesis so they, they influence positively influence gluconeogenesis okay in this process of gluconeogenesis also glucose is released glucose is released into the bloodstream okay and it can also as a result of gluconeogenesis it can also produce ketone ketone bodies okay so while ketone bodies and glucose both are produced and now once both these things are produced in the muscle what will happen fatty acid and ketone body use okay so fatty acid fatty acid and ketone bodies fatty acid and ketone bodies are in use and they also release amino acid they also release amino acid structures outside okay and that happens in the skeletal muscle range here that happens in the skeletal muscle range and afterwards once glucose is released okay ketone bodies are released brain can uptake the ketone bodies as well as glucose because i told you the brain is mostly feasting on glucose but apart from glucose it also feasts on ketone bodies okay so the ketone body is produced here is used by the brain and again if as brain is utilizing glucose glucose will be oxidized into what it will be oxidized into water and carbon dioxide and then it provides glucose for brain and other glucose requiring tissues so this glucose not only is used by brain but used by can be used by other tissues of our body okay on the other hand fatty acids and ketones uh, are used as fuels for nucleotide uh, i mean i mean non glucose requiring tissues so if tissue needs glucose so glucose is provided and there are some tissues which are non glucose non glucose requiring tissues they takes up ketone bodies okay they picks up ketone bodies and they utilize ketone bodies for their nurturing and nourishment so this is kind of the summary of what happens uh in two different states of our body one is the well fed state other one is the fasting state in both these states different organs are involved starting from the intestine pancreas adipose tissue liver skeletal muscle and brain and we saw how exactly all these different organs are related and how they regulate our body's function and the metabolism based on our well fed state as well as in our fasting state okay so that's kind of it for today if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel click the bell icon so that you get notified with any other new videos like this in future thank you bye